everybody, good morning. I think it's uh, great to always host the first session and uh, with a very diverse panel. Um, the good thing about hosting the first panel is the energies are up. Uh, it's not post-lunch, so there's no desperation to go for lunch either. So I think uh, let's start. Uh, we are on time. So good morning and welcome to our data-driven exploration of emerging technologies that are reshaping the future of media planning and advertising. Today, we delve into the transformative power of AI, IoT data analytics, key drivers propelling industries towards unprecedented growth and efficiency. In India, AI adoption in advertising and media planning has surged significantly with 37% of digital marketers fully leveraging AI-driven tools to enhance targeting and optimized media campaign performance. Globally, the adoption rate is even more pronounced, with studies showing that AI-powered advertising solutions are expected to grow by 65% annually over the next five years. These technologies are not just shaping how brands connect with consumers, but are also redefining metrics of success in digital marketing. Our panel today focuses on these quantitative advancements with qualitative impact. And with a very distinguished panel, let's begin. Very generic topic. How do we, how do we start? So let's, let's start with a generic common question. And Anand, since you're on the extreme right, I'll start with you. What do you think, in your opinion, in terms of technology, and you're hearing a lot about technology, right? What do you believe is the most transformative impact technology that will bring in digital marketing in the next five years and why? Because some of them have come and some of them have faded. Let's have an opinion from each one of you on the next five years, your, your bet on what? Yeah, thanks, Nikhil. Thanks for this beautiful question. Uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, the most important factor today is like where we are shaping. Today, where we are, I don't think where we should be. But as Dell said that, you have to learn, learn, and learn. So my funda is like, you have to unlearn what you have learned for now to start with the technology. You have to learn again, and you have to relearn again. So unlearn, learn, and relearn. That is what the technology is talking about when we are talking about AI and ML and automations that uh, per se from a market perspective. So when we are unlearning, we are making sure that the shuttles there in front of your eyes, those are going away. We are learning the new things, which is nothing but AI, ML, what we are talking, everybody is talking about AI, ML, but this is just a tip, on a tip of an iceberg. But there is huge things which is coming up. There are AGI which is coming up where, where they are, we are learning and relearning again. We are making sure our models are getting equipped with the information which is feeding by the technologies. Our models are making sure that whatever we have learned up till now, how we are optimally utilizing those models, and the machines are making sure that whatever we have learned up till now, how, how I can optimally use those knowledge. Yeah, I think that that's a great starting line. That leaves me to you, Anushri. I think you manage a very large organizations, media planning, and strategies, right? I mean, there are so many people that you might be coming across from the technology world, and everybody has a new toy. What is actually making your fancy go on? Yeah, this wants to stay. And I think from my perspective over my years of experience, this is a technology for the next five years. See, I think the conversation around AI has, AI and ML has been there for a few years now. But I think, you know, to your question on what's going to transform, um, I would imagine it's uh, the power of generative AI. Um, and I think it's still a playground for most people, um, you know, for most brands to really even kind of fathom the possibilities that it can kind of drive when it comes to larger marketing thinking or even business thinking. So yeah, to me, I think uh, we are probably um, at a very, very crucial juncture which would un create multiple unlocks multiple unlocks in the space of media, data, content, and even business at large. Um, and of course, who will take away, uh, you know, uh, the possibilities that it unlocks when it comes to data and analytics as well, especially more so predictive. Uh, I think that's a large conversation to be had, and I, I don't think we are, we are even scratching the surface like uh, the gentleman here pointed out. So yes, to me, generative AI and predictive way of looking at data, how do you apply the same across the marketing funnel and then drive business? I think there is, there is a lot of unknowns at this point of time, to be honest. I was worried that Anushri is going to say, taken away, 
jobs, but I'm glad she didn't say that. But I, I will not. It's a contentious probably will get topic. There. I'm not going to touch. <laughs> We said we are not going to touch on such topics, but yes. So we'll get there, I think, at the later part. Rajesh, I think you have the best knowledge when it comes to defining what is technology and what's not. And I think, why don't you explain firstly to people what is Gen AI and the difference between Gen AI and AI and not qualitatively just defining it. And obviously your take on the next five years because Mariko has been at the forefront of doing a lot of exciting things as well. Thank you so much, Sanket. So, look, uh, if you have to simplify it and understand it, at the heart of it is all what lies about, you know, how deep you can go in terms of statistics, which is exactly what people call it as data science. How you are able to take that data, extract insights on one hand, other point is also to kind of use regression prediction models, etc. So that kind of a uh, I would say data science, machine learning, etc., has been around for quite some time, and it has gotten refined. Now, what we saw as a add-on to it, or the newer capability which got unleashed, was around large language models, which is why you were great at dealing with numbers, extrapolating those numbers, giving a narrative to those numbers is what your large language models kind of figured it out. And of course, they are getting refined. So with those particular capabilities coming in place, you are not just able to analyze it, but you are also able to create something out of it. It can be text, it can be image. To some extent, it can be even animation-based videos. It is not really realistic-based videos. So we've been experimenting with those. Some of it is also in a gray space too. Sorry. So some of it is also in a bit of gray space in terms of saying that how will copyrights uh, look at if you kind of do a creative and put it out. So we're figuring out, we're exploring, we're trying to get the tech right. More importantly, the tech also has to be affordable. You can have all of it, but at what price? Will it make sense? So I think that is exactly where we are in terms of moving from one league of, I would say, AI and ML to generative AI. Not sure, like, you know, if, if, I, if it was clear. Yeah. I think you're quite clear, and I think we'll, we'll come back to some of those points. Uh, but I think we just touched upon a very interesting thing, Harshad, right? I mean, there are things which come in, and then can you afford it, right? I mean, I remember a time when Metaverse used to be, like, the thing, and everybody was making shops within the Metaverse, and I don't know then what happened, right? And uh, 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 how have you been seeing technology play a key enabler at, at Piramal or just in your personal experience as a marketer um, and some technologies that you're seeing are catching your fancy and saying, no, 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 I need to learn this, right? I think some of us are traditional marketers who've spent, uh, we, we saw the first era of Facebook marketing is like, yeah, it's a fad, till that guy became really important in all meetings, right? And I think we've seen so much transformation over the years in marketing that it becomes like, okay, we need to either uh, you know, learn skills or you will be outdated. What are you seeing which is catching your fancy? No, so I'll talk about two, three aspects, right? Uh, and you ready to tap. I don't think AI is going to replace. I think humans who are using AI are going to replace the other humans. So we'll start with that. Uh, but other than that, I think uh, the way we are seeing uh, tech enabling our businesses, right, is uh, we're keeping things very simple, right? Uh, we Let's look at it from Gen AI perspective. Uh, we look at personalization aspect where AI is enabling it. Uh, we're looking at aspects with regards to AR, uh, or, or you know, uh, we're looking at aspects of ad fraud. Now, these are three, four facets that we're looking at, uh, and how basically AI or any other te technology can help us uh, solve for it, right? So we're trying to keep it in that uh, uh, domain, so to say. Uh, honestly, I think uh, next five years you've touched upon, but uh, uh, what Anushri mentioned, right? The unlocks have just started to come in, and we are seeing that unlock happening across all pillars of digital, right? So we're talking about SEO, we're talking about campaign optimizations, we're talking about content creation. Uh, and a lot of that is still at a very superficial level because you can clearly make out, say an image if it's generated by AI and if an image is generated uh, from a, a creative person, right? Uh, but those lines are gonna get bloody as we progress and I think that's where we are headed. I think the creative piece, uh, and that's where AI, uh, and Gen AI is obviously going to be one aspect to it, uh, but uh, but that's what we see uh, as one aspect which is going to help 
uh, marketeers in years to come. And second is the larger aspect of ad fraud, uh, which I think, I mean, there are partners today in the market who's helping us to solve for that, you know, counting those viewable impressions and ensuring those impressions that are being delivered are the genuine impressions or the legit impressions. So those are the aspects I want to, I think next five years are going to touch a lot about on those viewability aspect, ad fraud aspect as well, because a lot has been pushed into the digital domain. Uh, not sure if everything can be attributed, can be measured, so. And, and then layering it on top of it uh, an analytics arm. I think it was, it's interesting because I think I was seeing a large tech giant drawing the Mona Lisa and doing it so well that, you know, they were saying, you know, you could apply technology and do it better than how it was done, but clearly there's only one Mona Lisa and that's, you're predominantly replicating it and that yeah. brings perspective. What do you think, Sanket? What's your opinion on the next five years? It's a common question to all panelists. Yeah. So next five years, I think uh, the way we see, you know, we, we actually help brands communicate with their clients, you know. Uh, so engaging uh, for marketeers with their customers happens to be core at our, uh, at our uh, you know, the way of business. What we're seeing is, uh, it's not just one particular technology, it's a combination of two or more technologies which kind of would help marketeers to gain in the next five years. For an example, let's say big data has been in uh, for a while today, you know, you've been collecting a lot of data through big data. Now you combine that with AI, you know, AI ML kind of a, uh, you know, technology, that gives you a very, very killer proposition to the market. Now when you're starting to engage with your clients and uh, you know, there is always a risk of a fraud coming in. So then you also try and integrate a, a technology like a blockchain kind of a technology and you combine all three pieces together. So now you have a faster, secured and much more authentic way of communication. So we see it would be a combination of all these technologies. We are already working in those kind of uh, fields uh, you know, right away. Uh, and I think that is the way to go for us. I think there's such a diversity on the panel and I think without some specific examples, I mean, I'll be a really poor moderation job. I mean, you've got ITC, you've got Group M, you've got Marico, you've got Piramal, you've got Root Mobile. I think it's to not ask specific use cases will be injustice to the audiences. So let's start with you, Rajesh. I think we've read, we've, we've all known, we don't need to read it, that Marico aims to leverage technology to deliver seamless customer experience and firmly believes in digital disruption, always had. Could you highlight some of the stuff that you guys have been doing recently to enhance your customer interactions and innovations within FMCG sector, which not only impacts you, but I think overall helps the overall CPG uh, ecosystem? Sure. So uh, there have been, I would say, interventions uh, which started with the virtual try-ons, especially in the hair care, the Livon part of it, etc. And then similar things also with the other personal care products. Now. How do you kind of engage beyond that? For example, whatever we did on the Sapola Honey part of creative, which was there, wherein you can kind of not exactly use a VR kind of a setup, but how can you simulate it on a mobile, right? So that is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is also experimenting with, you know, to what extent can you allow a LLM-based chatbot to actually, you know, interact and where exactly do you need a human intervention or guidance is something again which we are trying out. And hopefully we get it right, <coughs> then that will unlock a, a large bit of engagement possibilities going forward. Um, I would say in terms of creatives, we just talked about it. So how can we actually do that? And uh, in terms of also creating that unique experience for each of the consumer, how exactly can that get enabled? So these are the spaces where I would say we've covered some ground, and but we can also see that there's much more to be explored, more to be worked upon as we really get into it. We're living in a world of... Check. Can you hear me? Yeah. We're living in a world of a lot of ecosystems versus becoming open or becoming more walled. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a sudden requirement of first party yeah. Uh, data for a lot of CPG guys who said, yeah, it used to be just a phone number and mm -hmm. a POS mm -hmm. collection ecosystem, but I think first party data is becoming so important. Are data cleaning room conversations becoming very relevant for somebody who manages conversations at your level? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you know, how can we partner with, let's say, uh, e-com provider wherein we don't really give away the data both from a privacy perspective as well as our own kind of, uh, you know, 
I wouldn't call it as an asset, but our own kind of a data, but yet benefit from each other is an area being explored. Uh, but have we gotten really uh, ahead in that journey? The answer is not yet. We are still kind of testing waters on that. Anushree, I mean, the distribution mega powerhouse of ITC, but also at the forefront of technology and leading a lot of stuff, right? I saw some exciting stuff that you did, predominantly Gen AI, which was for brands like Sunfeast, um, clearly interacting with Shah Rukh Khan. I mean, it probably won everything that I remember from last year, and I think uh, the kind of stuff that you guys are doing is super exciting. Um, tell us a little bit more and what's in the repository for consumer lens, because I think we are all avid marketers, we are also consumers of some of the stuff that you do. What's, what's in the bag and what, you have, what are the interesting things you guys have been doing? So I think, uh, yes, uh, things, have, uh, things, have kind of, things have kind of changed in the last few years, and that's predominant because the consumer has changed. Uh, the consumer really, there has been a little bit of a transformation when it comes to the way consumers actually interact with brands today. So I think uh, market has changed or business has changed because of that. So uh, typically, you know, this, this entire story of consumers not, consumers trying to control what they consume is, is, is a very, very big challenge that marketers have faced today, right? I mean, I can just skip swipe and just end a communication with the brand, or I can unsubscribe, right? So I think this entire story of driving a value exchange with consumers in terms of how do you really, you know, how do you add some value to your consumer's life, whether it's providing information, content, entertaining them, or even plainly moving them forward in terms of, you know, if they're looking for purchase after they have seen a piece of communication that interested them uh, in a very, very personalized fashion. All of these became table stakes. And that was compounded by, you know, the digital first brands, the, you know, whether it's entertainment, whether it's e-commerce. I think that became the basic expectation of the consumer that, you know, it needs to be, content needs to be served in a particular manner. The immersiveness needs to come alive in a particular manner. So I think brands had to kind of change. And hence, even a manufacturing company uh, like ITC, uh, has a tech suite to kind of talk of today simply because you really, really need to be where the consumer is. Uh, the uh, the go-to market needs to uh, really, really be relevant and in time, so which means that that entire quick prototyping, test, learn, launch, and then really correct and course correct and then uh, create a different prototype and test. I think these things are becoming uh, the, the way we do, the way we actually create products today. And then, of course, even communication. So I think, uh, you know, everyone's kind of touching upon uh, the agility uh, of creating communication. And that's where kind of AI or generative AI-based solutions do find a lot of relevance. Uh, the cost aspect of it, I mean, uh, if it really, really kind of is efficient and effective and really cuts ice with consumers through an immersiveness window, yes, it does uh, make sense uh, to really adopt something like this. And of course, how do you measure and consistently learn um, and, and, and really spot opportunities in data. And I've seen the best of creative opportunities for marketers have been, uh, you know, in data, so to speak. So uh, across the funnel of, you know, uh, whether it's making a piece of content discoverable or a piece of product even discoverable to the consumer and then moving them forward, uh, uh, you know, in terms of really making uh, or adding value to a consumer's life and, and retaining them from a lifetime value perspective. Um, perhaps uh, those are shifts that are emerging and technology actually or technological solutions, so to speak, kind of really play an important role there. I think excitingly also, um, you know, sometimes a lot of us use these jargons and, you know, it sort of scares the people that, hey man, I don't know what Gen AI is, I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of the technology innovations are also happening from the front of how a lot of the large biggies were looking at traditional marketing. TV used to be it, now there is the hottest topic is connected TV. I think within connected TV, I know that ITC has done some great stuff and not just exposures of ad, but obviously it's some of the tech call household sync where you can actually look at the ad, create an experience to recall, then the user is actually buying that ARTA, getting, and you're saying you could actually drive the whole funnel. For the first time, you could answer the guy who saw the ad on TV, hua kya? You know, and it is not left on that post-mortem of next month where the body is lying there, media spends have happened, Big Boss is not successful. You don't have to do it because with connected TV and stuff that is evolving and with household saying technologies which are leading to consumer journeys, it's just exciting. And I think I was in a panel where people were saying, 
what if the TV advertising could have the fragrance of the shampoo? I was like, okay, guys are thinking, man, I think I was talking uh, to one kid in that panel who we specifically got and he was a college uh, youngster and he said, I don't like touching the remote a lot. It's like, okay, what more should we be doing in connected TV? He's like, I want gestures. I want TV to understand what all content I'm going through, OEMs to, in, you know, sort of enable that kind of uh, same uh, uh, utilization, optimization that a mobile does, and we're not far away. And I think all that is using LLMs, all that is using generative AI, even from a targeting perspective, right? User fatigue. At the end of the day, a lot of us media advertisers are saying, you know what, we want us to be in the best channel in all possible mediums. It's the same guy. You did end up showing him, you said frequency cap of three, but you used four mediums, that four into three, 12 times that guy saw the ad, and is this user fatigue or <laughs> user favorability? And that is where I think. Gen AI is enabling DCO, it is saying that so I mean, to me, I think it's um, how do you really transition the consumer from one stage to another? I know that it's not a linear journey, it's a web of multiple journeys, but essentially how do you really, it, in whatever touch point that you create with this consumer, whatever connection moment that you create with this consumer, how do you really make the most of that touch point and then move, move that consumer forward? And I think that the larger umbrella term to me is always value exchange because unless that happens, whether it's am I delighting this consumer from an information perspective or an experience perspective, and I'll just give you the example of you touched upon what happened during the Sunfeast Dark Fantasy launch, uh, the Shah Rukh Khan communication launch where uh, a generative AI tool was used to kind of really create replicas of that where you could actually feature alongside uh, the celebrity. Um, you know, that essentially was probably the most entertaining thing that would have happened. And what happened then was we just could not run uh, ads to kind of promote it simply because there was so much of organic traction. Uh, we had to invest in servers actually yeah. to uh, to ensure that uh, we are able to, uh, to we are able to deliver those uh, experiences yeah. to the consumer. So I mean, a powerful idea which is rooted in consumer expectation, immersiveness, and that's where the role of and and done at a cost which is not overwhelming. It needs to make sense to the business. I mean, at the end of the day, these are companies which are. Uh, manufacturing or experience companies, they, it needs to financially make sense. It, 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 it has to provide some um, transformational talkability or shares or some kind of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, brand metrics, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, all possible top box uh, metrics that we chase and even market shares. So it needs to fit in there, fit in that relevant, uh, you know, frameworks for it to really be, uh, really find adoption, uh, you know, in the life of businesses. So I think at the heart of everything that technology produces is obviously the consumer, right? Um, Anand, that gets me to you. I mean, the guy with sitting with the data hat, right? I mean, doing it inside out, day on day, obviously. And how are you looking at data analytics? I mean, can you share some examples of technologies being used to drive actionable insights for marketing strategies? Yeah, so the thing is, uh, the best part is that we have data. Now, we started to learn what data is. Now, everybody is having this terminology on the internet, saying that data is new oil. So, but uh, the factor is that how to read that data. So, wherein our importance comes in play, where we invest a lot of amount, time and energy into assessing the data. So, data is available in the unstructured format. So our first job is to make sure that the data which is we are getting from different platforms, how we are structuring that data. That is the most critical part because it is coming from different umbrellas, it is coming from different sources. So making sure that you have your uh, fundamentals very clear, you have your nomenclatures there in the place, then only you will be able to put that data from unstructured to structured format. When you have a structured data, you are making sure that the life of uh, my team members, my company's life in terms of assessing that data, making a prediction on that data, making taking a call on that, that data, which gives them immense ple pleasure that yes, earlier it was like uh, 2.3 CTR ho jayega. But how? That was the biggest challenge everybody had. And kyun ho raha hai? <laughs> kyun hua hai? Nahi hua to kyun nahi hua, hua to kyun hua? So that was a challenge. But now, at this age of data that we have the data, we have past references in our place, we are making sure that our models that we are building in, in ours, those are making these predictions. They are making by chhati chaudi karke bolta hai, yes, I can deliver this because I have the data. We are making sure that we are giving immense 
update to our clients, to our partners, making sure that how your business is getting known to community. Ultimate aim of ours is like who's, you know, uh, hands and legs and brains to all the advertisers out here. And uh, the way e-com is booming, so I think we will play a wonderful role out here and handshake with everybody in this panel and make sure that the e-com is the way it is booming and we, we are seeing beyond e-com now. It is not only e-com. We are making sure that the analytics that we are putting on board, it gives you, uh, you know, you are talking to your system, you are talking to your data. We are making sure my technologists are making those codes available for my end user because my end user is not going to understand the code. But what they want is like the LLM to be involved there. They want to see that how I can ask question in my language or whatever I understand. So I have to make sure that the codes are been written in such a way that any Tom, Dick and Harry can pick up that uh, chatbot and he can ask a question. So that, that is where our importance is coming on place. So we are making sure that the analytics which is building on top of this data is visualized by the advertisers. They can make predictions based on the data. Earlier it was like cases Everybody used to put forward the Excel reports in front of the clients. Avi filter maro or dekho. So that, that is never the case now. So we are making sure that we are giving a visualization. We are making sure that these clients are, can take decision on the visualization. Because the picture tells you more in terms of what Excel tell you. So this is how we are making sure the benchmarking of my products, benchmarking of my assumptions are you know, backing you with your databases. So the data lakes are getting created, we are making predictive analysis is getting generated, we are making sure that uh, we are having chatbots for our clients, we are having chatbots to talk about our reports. So this is how the data is going to be... The yeah, perfect, Anand, I think yep. um, um, you talked a lot. I think I heard a, WPP is a powerhouse of data, we all know that, and I heard a little hinty pitch to some of these large CPG brands on the, uh, on, on the panel, but I think you, you can always do that. But from, from data, and you know, everybody's talking about 0p now, 1p now, what do you want to do with that data, man? I mean, nobody's asking that, and that leads me to you, uh, Harshit. I mean, you know, Piramal is doing some really exciting stuff when it comes to D2C, right? And I think, what do you want to share with the consumers? You were quite excited about that field, and you know, I saw that excitement, we were talking pre-panel, Tell us a little bit more what you guys are doing. So, uh, so again, right, uh, from the D2C perspective, what we've realized is, look, your acquisition is always going to be expensive, right? So one is, how are you going to drive the retention funnel using a lot of these tech layers, using MarTech implementation to drive better ROAS? But more importantly, even from the acquisition perspective, how can you improvise your, uh, you know, A cost, so to say? So we kind of divide the D2C space into all of these, uh, let's just say an acquisition and retention from a larger perspective. And from the acquisition perspective, let's just say whatever, uh, whatever we can test and learn, we're doing that, right? From with regards to uh, using Gen AI in creatives, uh, in, in in copies, using uh, say multiple platforms with regards to creative development, and then see which creatives are, are the AI-led creatives doing better. Using AI to actually scout audiences, as against my in-house team working on the audiences, right? Uh, so one is that layer to improvise my acquisition funnel. Uh, once I have the consumer on the funnel, how do I basically drive retention? And for that, again, there are a host of things, right? So with, uh, with the conversation piece coming in uh, and layering Gen AI on top of your company data, because a lot of our products are pharma-led, a lot of our products are uh, intimate health-led, right? Uh, you don't want an open web to answer those questions, right? So you want to layer or overlay your Gen AI on top of what your information exists within the ecosystem, and that's something that you want to share with the audiences. So we're driving education, we're driving retention through that. Uh, there are minor aspects in MarTech implementation. For example, a consumer A will prefer interacting with me on WhatsApp, a consumer B prefers email, right? So those optimizations are now available with me with these uh, tech implementations. Uh, there are best times to send kind of an optimizations available today, right? Uh, I don't want to be disturbed during office hours, or I do. Uh, and that's when I basically would prefer sending out those emailers, notifications, whatnot, right? So I'm looking at the entire funnel from the time a user is unknown who is just mm. browsing my website uh, to the time he has actually converted and per, per, you know purchasing from my platform again. I see there was a buzzer, so I'll and keep it short. There's a problem with the tech at E4M <laughs> on, on that, so 
Yeah. We'll quickly wrap it up. Uh, your two cents on this conversation and how you guys doing it at Route 19. Yeah, so uh, we're doing multiple things at multiple levels, you know. I mean, uh, right from you know, earlier when we used to communicate to a customer via simple text message from moving the same customer onto a WhatsApp and having more of an interactive kind of a, 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 you know, conversation with him to getting into an NLP based bots where you know you can even kind of do some kind of sentiment analysis uh, and then pro uh, and then present your products according to his mood and according to his preference according to the uh, the channel of his preference because some pre people would still prefer receiving an email over you know a whatsapp or maybe a phone call so based on all of that we partner with a lot of cdp players uh, and uh, we communicate the way a customer prefers to be communicated and on top of it, what we are doing right now is, you know, we, we are also working on something called as an OTP-less kind of authentication, you know. So, because OTP has its own set of drawbacks, you know, it comes delayed uh, and all those kind of stuff. Uh, so, so it's just, you just log into an app and, and you, you authenticate it in a much more secured way. You carry out your transaction in a secured way and it can be traced end to end. Those are the few things that we are working on and I am... I understand yeah. that a lot. This I'm sorry. I think that's that's us. But before we end, we're going to take 30 seconds more. I'm known for this. So I'm not going to do it as good as the person who does it really well on television. But we have a certain something which I didn't tell you about. It's called the rapid fire round, which I always do. The idea is why I didn't tell you that is because it defeats the whole purpose of the rapid fire, right? So these are the rules of the game are quite simple. I ask you a question. I don't want to put you on a spot, but I put you on a spot and you got to answer it. The first thing that comes to your mind. So I'll start with you, Anand. Sure. You don't have to think. You're not answering on the behalf of your company. You can answer as yourself. Um, if you're invited to the grandeur Ambani wedding, who would be you most keen to meet? Of course, Ambani. <laughs> Himself. <laughs> Which one? The big one. Papa one. <laughs> the papa. Okay, Anushree. If the T20 win that India just had, if it had to be named into a movie, what would you name it? Dawn of cricket. Dawn. Not bad. Not bad. Rajesh, Mariko make a difference. If it had a face, would it be Virat Kohli or Rohit Sharma? Rohit Sharma. Nice. Ashit, Poonam Pandey marketing virality. Ye or ne? Ne. <laughs> ne? Sanket, yeah. cage match between Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. Who would you bet on? The first one. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg, the yeah. first one. <laughs> All right, that's us, guys. Thank you so much for bearing with us for the extra time, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you.